WWE and Vince McMahon. Um, not not so much anything too much new to report on. And uh, you guys did a great job kind of breaking it down on Friday way. But just looking over this past weekend and a lot of the names that have kind of emerged as potential buyers of this company. Are there any thoughts you have just in terms of what what logically makes a fit for WWE and maybe putting aside just like the price tag attached to it? Because I think if we look at just sheer dollars that can be thrown at WWE, the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund would probably have the most uh, liquid uh, finances to outbid anybody, um, you know, with with like. Amazon a a distant second there. But in terms of just like what you see as a fit, if a sale were to go through, does do any of them stand out above the rest? Comcast, you know, absolutely. I mean, they're already uh, in bed with them with with, of course, Raw and USA and also Peacock. Um, They've been paying them a lot um, throughout their entire relationship with them. Um, And um, you stand to question whether, I mean, we've always discussed, you know, are they, I'm sure we've always discussed, um, like the possibility of them, um, no longer paying these fees every, so uh, every few years. And, and as they continue to escalate and just outright buying it, I mean, if they had made that decision years ago, they probably would have ended up uh, breaking even maybe by now. Um, so I, I think they're probably the front runners in my opinion, um, if there's a sale at all, um, probably the lack of sale might be the, the real front runner. But I mean, if that's a if possibility, you're, if you're selecting a, from the list that seems to be, you know, be being uh, paraded around, I would say that. Um, but you never know. There could be a, a, a sort of a left field option. I mean, there are some options out there like like a Disney where I just I don't know how well like a WWE would fit in their portfolio yes of course you could change the product to be even more pg and and suitable um and and maybe it's it, it would make sense like in, in ways that i can't imagine right now but um D- it, disney's a real interesting one when you give it a lot of thought because the the immediate reaction is that one of wwe being in that that disney brand and you know bob Iger is coming back to disney and he has pulled off some massive deals when it comes to uh, acquiring like intellectual property, which is one of WWE's big selling features. This is not the level of, you know, Lucasfilm or Marvel, but it's, it's still of that, um, you know, level of deals that uh, Bob Iger has pulled off in the past. Um, Disney as well, like, you know, famously with Bob Iger, they got very cold feet at one point when they were th- discussing like the idea of buying Twitter and just realizing that this is we do not want to get involved in this at at, at the end and mm-hmm. being turned off by that. And for all of these companies, um, you know, th- the idea of, you know, I, and looking at, at Disney, what have they said over the past week when it comes to Dana White? Silence. And yep. if you're looking at, we are just hoping to navigate and get through this, the idea of getting into bed with Vince McMahon, uh, to me is, you know, are, are you, how much is Vince McMahon going to play a factor in, in some of these people? He is now front and center with these sales talks. He is back on their board of directors. And is that going to give a concern to them? And the relationship they have with UFC, it's an interesting one in, in the sense of on one side, it's. Well, if we are looking at purchasing WWE, would we rather raise enough that we were even talking about buying UFC from Endeavor? Or the other side is just we're happy to kind of rent the UFC product. It would be quite a different uh, task to be buying one of these companies that we maybe don't want to be so attached to um, in that sense. But Do they own any sports leagues? Uh, Disney, they do... I'm, t- I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I, I don't believe, like, not any, like, sports That room let teams. us know if, if there's an answer to that. But, I mean, not nothing, I guess, um, that notable that I, I would recall. I'm just trying to think if they have in their portfolio something similar. What's the most likely, you know, what's the biggest comparison point that they might have to WWE? Um, I mean, it, it's really, it's like, by extension, it's like ESPN's relationship with with the UFC, but that's not mm-hmm. an, an ownership stake that they have in it. But, you know, they certainly have seen the success the UFC has brought to ESPN plus, but it's also like this, it is still like WWE and UFC, as much as they have uh, become like these targets, they are still on the fringes of entertainment and, and sports to many people. And I think over this last week and talking about this coverage that Vince McMahon and Dana White have received, or rather the lack of attention they've received, 
it reinforces that idea that these are still people on the fringe that are not of the same kind of coverage that we warrant to an NFL or an NBA if your equivalent was at the center of some of these stories. Right, right. Um, so people in the chat room, as uh, I was looking this up myself too, um, are mentioning that they used to own or, or do they still own the Anaheim Angels? Let's see here. You'd have to look that up. I don't know the exact. And the company sold situation. the Angels to agree to sell the Mighty Ducks and Disney. Okay, so believe that you used to own. Anyway, th- 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 so that's Disney. Um, I-, I think Endeavor is is obviously very interesting. You know, they they own the UFC and um, it- I-, I think Endeavor is the one that. Yeah, again, if you're looking at this strategically, and that's going to be a big part of this is. Again, if you are WWE and it is sheer shareholder value and what is the most money we can get, you're probably looking at the at at Saudi Arabia as a realistic option to sell this to. But if you're also looking at where is where do we place this company that in five years it is going to grow this company's market cap and grow this business in a in a major way through all of the different uh, vertical integrations endeavor and disney to me would represent the, the strongest options and i see disney as a more distant option than endeavor endeavor has has they largely had the UFC through the pandemic to get them through some very, very choppy waters. They have seen firsthand the success that UFC was a sale that a lot of people questioned in 2016 that today is viewed as a bargain. But again, WWE is, it is a different animal. And I would say it is, it is less of an accepted part of like the, the sports um, scene or diet of your fan base. than even UFC is that it Mm -hmm. is, you know, UFC is something that, if there's something major, it can be one of the top stories on SportsCenter. WWE is not going to be that. It's something different, but it's also something that I think Endeavor is very open to. And has there are a lot of parallels with UFC rather than comparing this to another sports league. In some ways, like, is it not even within closer in their wheelhouse, considering how, you know, how much of, um, I guess, um, how much of uh, um, they're firmly in place in Hollywood and, as a and talent agency, a huge, you have the connection with uh, Endeavor and Dwayne Johnson. Like there, there, there's a lot of reasons to look at Endeavor as um, a, a lot of value um, attached to it as well. Uh, your, your, your streaming options like a Netflix and Amazon, it would really come down to um, first of all, just the idea of like Netflix getting into something in in an ownership capacity. And this would be closer to live sports for them and how engaged they would want to be. Netflix is tough to me because you are not just buying programming. You're not even just buying like an F1 where it's X amount of races a year. Like this is a whole year round thing that like programming is one aspect of it. It's a merchandise house. It's a Mm -hmm. live event touring company. It's pay-per-view. It's all these different facets that yes you have these departments that can run these things but it's something like netflix has never dealt with a it's lot labor, of what this it's labor laws you know related to like um entertainment or uh pseudo sport you know like mm-hmm. that 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 they have uh, i was uh, i would assume zero knowledge or expertise in. um is that something they is that a headache they would want to take on yes and and again if you are vince mcmahon and you go with the position that he wants to put himself into a position where I am needed to run this company. Like that's certainly uh, something you have to look at here. Like what, what group is going to have that belief that a Vince McMahon needs to be front and center in this whole thing? Because you have to imagine uh, that that is the play here. Like Vince McMahon is not looking to sell this thing off and then go back to his, his quote unquote retirement either. Um, Mm -hmm. So now, does he have a responsibility, though? Though, like, I mean, you know, when we're talking about um, a public traded company, of course, the, the responsibility is for him to take the best offer. If the best offer happens to not include him in charge, does like do, is he does he have to take that? He doesn't have to, but there is, you know, there, there is always like that fiduciary duty of. Mm-hmm. Um, but so why wouldn't he have to? You could argue, though, like he pretty much put out the gauntlet last week that I need to be involved or I'm not going to improve, approve any of these deals, regardless of what's offered. Like if there was some, you know, 
if you're looking at this company going for seven or eight billion dollars and someone throws out um, a number on the higher side of that and Vince McMahon was saying, I, I'm not going to approve any of this. Um, yeah, you you could have shareholder revolt um, if, if there is a, um, you know, if Vince McMahon is presenting himself as a as a as a restriction towards a, a sale that is going to be beneficial to all of these shareholders. It's it's an interesting dance that he needs to play in, in mm-hmm. all of this, but ultimately, like he is the 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 controlling shareholder, and then if as well, like the question that's come up, and this would I think probably be limited to the Saudi Arabia option, is enough money that could take this thing back private as well. Mm-hmm. Like a Not lot of. A- like even if it was own, uh, you know, even if Endeavor made a play, I mean, don't you think that that that, that would because you that they're not uh, uh, like are they a public company? I don't believe Endeavor so. is a public company. Yes. Oh, Endeavor is okay. Yes, but so then, but their business with the UFC, how much of, of that is public? Um, it, th- there's aspects of like Endeavor, Endeavor, like UFC is like a subsidiary of Endeavor. So it's like mm-hmm. UFC itself is not a public company, but Endeavor so the WWE is. WWE would be operated th- similarly. Um, yeah, in, in, in theory, like WWE is public. So, I mean, buying Meaning this. If Endeavor bought WWE, WWE wouldn't have to be as public with their information as they are now. Is that uh, correct? No, no, like they would they would be buying like the the controlling like like shares that would have the ownership of the company. But as long as like you could spend enough that you could buy all your shares back. But that requires a lot of capital. And that that's why the the Saudi Arabia option would probably be the only one that that would be able to finance such a deal Um, where where you're talking about the billions attached to this investment fund. And that, it, like, you can't take that off the table either. Like, this is a. This so, is when a we're vi- talking about, just to clarify for my stupid brain, you know, just when we're talking about people, this list that MJF has so kindly tweeted out, um, sorry, not this one, uh, this one here. Uh, we're talking about just not necessarily buying the company outright. Maybe they are buying outright, or maybe they're just buying at the least controlling shares. Yes, yes. I mean, okay. there would still be the, the shareholder portion. So, and- can we rule out some sort of joint deal? No, no, because a lot of these companies, it's like they may need uh, financing to pull off a, d- a deal like this. If, if you're looking in the six to eight billion dollar range, um, and that's why they they stated in the um, the employee meeting on Friday that you know the options are a sale, a merger, or even going private. They did mention that in the meeting. So, like a Comcast, for instance, which you know the Comcast one. Um, I know Brandon Thurston has been more kind of uh, pessimistic about Comcast um, buying this company, but it all comes down to how valuable, like especially Raw is to this company and how much money would be going to WWE in these next rounds of negotiations. Like, you know that they are going to try to retain Raw and would it be that um, that catastrophic to lose raw that the idea of buying the company becomes a a realistic option for them because it's not just raw but also when the the network rights come up with peacock like losing all of these things when those deals come come due um it can affect several aspects of your business you also get to take fox or sorry uh smackdown from a competitor that's you know currently right now with fox um yep. and maybe you get you get to put it you know in a beneficial time slot on one of your own networks it's going to do better than young rock on nbc yeah so i mean just thinking about like what raw and smackdown combined would be worth in 2024 i mean do you have a ballpark john of like like or at least like like a rough estimate you know like it well today today we're year. looking at like the average it's it's around like 465 million for both for shows both on an annual basis. Mm-hmm. So I would I would imagine like they they are shooting for over like 6 to 700 I would imagine just just for Raw and SmackDown. I if would we're imagine talking like, an offer like just throwing numbers out there just like blindly right now like or, or, or not blindly edu- your educated guess of like what what is WWE valued at right now is that information out there? I mean they're they're valued at just under six billion, right? So you would think, like you think you about know, this, it like makes if, sense if, to buy, if, if you're looking at say six hundred and fifty million dollars over a five year deal, 
Like at, at a point you're thinking like, why don't we just go all the way in and buy this thing? And then in five years, we don't have to go through this again where rights might be that much more. Um, you know, everyone's looking at these rights and are, is there going to be some casualties here? I don't believe WWE is going to be one of them. AEW could. Um, but if you're WWE, you're like, to me, like they had been smooth sailing until the, this Vince wrench was thrown into things. And, you know, because of the sale, um, it was not the curveball. Maybe some expected that this was detrimental to the stock. It's been the opposite effect. But it is something where if you're some of these companies like this is viewed on the outside as uh, a power play, that there is a lot of instability. And what are you buying um, as opposed to a post Vince company that to me was a much more attractive company on paper than having this volatile figure in the middle of it that very likely wants to assume a power position wherever the, this company is is sold to. And he's putting himself front and center to make sure that he is taken care of in a sale. Hmm. The thing is, though, like, I think if I was one of these companies, these major, major companies, um, is that that much of a concern? Are they that concerned about negative PR coming off of Vince McMahon? The bottom line is that when Vince was in control, this company was still very profitable, the, the most profitable it's ever been. Um, and is that ultimately what they care about? It's yeah. it's to me the difference between, again, like licensing content versus like buying it outright, that this is very much now you are in the business with Vince McMahon and this is your business. It's not like even ESPN who just gets to put out, Hey, we just, we just run the UFC content. We, you can go refer to them. And ultimately ESPN will be fine. ABC will be fine. Disney will be fine. Right. How, how much is the public really pushing these stories? Yeah, it's, it's something that I, I do believe these companies do take into account those those factors. I don't think that that's ultimately going to be enough that that would sour them if they were uh, wanting the, this company. But I do think like being with Vince McMahon, like it's it is so someone you're getting into business with that. I think like there are enough you know caution flags up that it it is going to make people second guess wanting to be in business with this person and what what problems this can bring to us down the road like it's not just like if you're endeavor for instance okay look at what Ari Emanuel did after the Jamal Khashoggi murder, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. And now you're in business with a company that is very much in bed with the government of Saudi Arabia that is making money off of multiple shows per year um, that you are now going to have to absorb and now be at the forefront of. I'm very curious to know if you asked Ari Emanuel today. Like, I mean, obviously, like on the record, you'd probably say he wouldn't take it, Ben, but man, I just... Like if you're if you ask Vince, certainly he he he'd probably be like really glad that he took that offer and that they didn't jeopardize it. If you are looking at the the Saudi Arabia option, what do you mm -hmm. feel the uh, short term? Of course, I think it would be largely uh, of fans very very negative. Do you mm -hmm. feel it would be something detrimental long term in terms of fans like that yeah. being their breaking point? Or do you feel it is something that ultimately people would not feel good about, but that they're not giving up the, the, this product that they enjoy? I think the answer is no. And I, th I, 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 I hate to th think I don't even know if it's necessarily th thick and lowly of people like it's just uh, I think wrestling. It'd be one thing if it'd be like a movie or something like, you know, one particular pay-per-view or I don't know, um, maybe even a team like, you know, but but I think because wrestling is so ingrained into people's just like lives or like wrestling fans lives and the fact that the WWE largely still very much is a monopoly right now. You're going to get the hardcores that I think will, will you know, for them, that, that'll be their breaking point. But for a lot of other people that have stuck around through all the other things that could have been justified as breaking points, the, the vast majority, I don't think, they'll either not notice or they won't care. Yeah. I, I think people would be very naive to dismiss that option. And they'll because... do everything they can to minimize that news publicly, like meaning on their product, at least. Yeah, but I, I look at that one as... Where can you probably get the biggest price tag and where would Vince McMahon be most insulated in terms of an ownership group? Like, that's it. Like the government of Saudi Arabia is not relocating to Stanford or running a wrestling company. They are investing, 
Basically. They are investing. Here mm. are the keys and you guys run it. Like that is going to be a very hands-off ownership would be my my strong assumption. Um and, but, but, and but, that but, very but much what is benefits. The trade-off? But what 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 is what, what like ultimately what is what does Saudi Arabia want out of it? Saudi Arabia wants a commercial for Saudi Arabia. Exactly. So how much of that integration is going are you would you potentially see on on a daily WWE product, not even just, you know, twice a year? Um I, I would certainly think like that would be uh, an aspect of the programming. Yes. Like more events in Saudi Arabia. I don't think you're looking at two a year. And I think they're happening a lot more frequently. At that point, do you jeopardize your partnerships with the networks and advertisers? Well, that becomes a very difficult question to answer where these deals come up and like a, a, a Saudi Arabia owned WWE um, they're seeking these U.S. TV deals, and you know it's it's not the same thing as Live Golf, but they've had you know they have their issues with the PGA, but it's also the Saudi Arabia funding that I think has made a lot of these broadcasters squeamish about getting into business with them. Is w- like when these TV deals come up, like like maybe a Comcast is more more than willing to you know wwe is a proven product it's not as though it's something that is a startup like live golf but mm-hmm. now you are talking about that this ownership that it is going to be i think more difficult to sell some of these rights um especially if you're talking about programming that is 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 promoting uh a government that has a long history of human rights abuses that are going to be very sensitive to some of these companies that do not want to have that attachment we got a, p- a couple people in the chat room reacting with WrestleMania in Saudi Arabia, WrestleMania in Saudi Arabia. Guys, we're not that far off from that even right now. Like, we, what do we have? Like, we have two events a year that are profit beyond what WrestleMania makes. You know, there it's it's uh, these Saudi Arabia events are like in terms of grandeur, uh, the same as WrestleMania. Other they, than just they the make name. more off one Saudi Arabia show than WrestleMania is going to make for them. I mean, yeah. it would be very much within their ability to stay 50 million for a show. We'll give you 75 million. All they have to do is just change the name from crown jewel to WrestleMania and be the same. And it's done. Anyway, this is going to be a story that is going to be one to follow, of course, throughout 2023. Um, But a lot of these companies, like you can make arguments for and against, we didn't even get into Amazon. Amazon's a really interesting one as well. And Mm -hmm. the idea of raw and or SmackDown, going to a streamer or keeping one out there that you can still make, you could still license raw to a Comcast while putting SmackDown onto a Netflix or Amazon. Like these are all options on the table. You, you don't have to bring everything in house. If you're Amazon, you could still have, um, you know, rights that you can still benefit off of this, this brand of selling your network rights or selling at least one of your flagship shows. What what do you think are the percentage chances of a uh, Warner Brothers Discovery getting in the game? Uh, very very minimal. I I do not see them. Maybe in another time period that would have been one to 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 look at to be interested of them saying, hey, wrestling has worked for us, and now we're going to get uh, the bigger brand in WWE. I don't think they're in that position now. Um, I, I would have to. I don't think any of these you can put at zero percent, but Warner Brothers Discovery would be very low. Which is, of course, you know, good for AEW. Good for AEW, but at the same time, why are Warner Brothers Discovery not going to be very active in this? And mm-hmm. what what is left for AEW? I mean, if if you go by, you know, people, you know, lamenting if if like the NBA is is brought back or not, like that could be good for AEW if if money is freed up. Like they do need programming, and on the in the grand scope of things, AEW is a steal when it comes to what you are um, what you are paying out. So, you know, AEW does fit into all of this. There could be there could be good or bad uh, attached to AEW. They're they're much more of a wild card, um, I think, given all of these recent changes and and what what money is earmarked for them. 